and this is me, you, and welcome to a very special Fun Friday video. It will be my 10th anniversary on YouTube on April 11th. Can you believe it's been 10 years since I started this channel? Oh my god. I am so happy that our community has grown so much in the past 10 years. Like, I still remember taping my very first video and like uploading it. Whew. I started with that one video and now I've made over 800. I just want to say a big thank you to all of you for your continued support, encouragement, and for just being there. Not just for me, but for the other fans. I love all of you and this online family we've built together. And I love how creative you all are with your awesome comments and the way you support and encourage each other. We could be next door or we could be across the world, but we're all bound by this love for art and creativity and inspiration. Glad many of you told me in the past 10 years that this channel is your happy place, your community where you can feel safe and inspired, and when you watch my videos, you feel calm and relaxed. Let me know which video was the very first you watched from me and how long you've been a fan and subscriber. I'd love to know. No matter if you're a brand new fan or if you've been with me since the very beginning, I love all of you so much. Also, please let me know what this channel means to you. For me, it's the bond that I feel between myself and so many people around the world and the fact that I could use my art to help other people and to make them feel happy and inspired. And that just makes me feel really grateful. I made an original beautiful illustration and you can print yours out from my website at funadraw.com. Thank you so much for being a wonderful fan. This is also the same illustration as the cover of one of my upcoming coloring books coming soon. And now for today's art challenge. Okay, so today I'm going to be reimagining sweet, innocent girls as monster cuties. This is going to be quite interesting. I haven't really done something like this before, so I'm excited to see how I can turn innocent, sweet characters into something that's a little more creepy or scary. The first character I'm going to reimagine is Vanellope from Wreck-It Ralph. I haven't really done too many drawings based on this fandom. I remember I turned King Canny into a pretty princess before, but I think that was about it. So I'm excited to draw Vanellope as a cute little monstrous character. I think this character was a little bit trickier for me to reimagine with uh like features that might come across as scary or creepy to me because like okay so vanellope is just super cute and super innocent looking uh how am i going to incorporate those features and also you know her story takes place in a land full of like candy and sweet things so ideally i would like to have this design uh incorporate some elements of that i just didn't know how at first I was thinking about, you know, like if I turned her different like parts of her body into pieces or, you know, like her hair. And then I was thinking about her ponytail. I kind of like how it kind of swoops down. So I was thinking, what if I made the ponytail extra long, but it's not made of hair. It's more like, um, kind of like, a, like a dark oozing mass of uh, like melted licorice or something like that. So I kind of liked where the hair was going and then as for the rest of her body, I kind of wanted to keep her upper body like very cute and sweet looking but then her lower body I had some interesting thoughts about what to do with those legs. So I was thinking you know in the movie like those cybugs they're those designs are pretty cool. So I was thinking it would be funny if I gave Vanellope uh, these kind of cybug kind of designs with these sharp claws on the end and she'll have like uh, a few of them so she'll be like scuttering around. That'll be kind of creepy uh, but you know it's also funny for me that the rest of her like the face looks very sweet and innocent and then when you get to the lower body it's like oh that is not normal. So I like that. <laughs> 
I was also thinking making her melted licorice hair some kind of like almost like a tar pit kind of thing where it could trap her victims like she can trap her prey or you know bother some characters into her like dangerous <laughs> sticky hair of doom so I was thinking that would be really interesting actually and then I started to you know design the hair like that with bubbles and like gross looking parts and I thought okay yeah this design is gonna be really cool originally I was thinking of making her pupils very slit like uh, to make her look a little more vicious or creepy but then I changed them into round pupils because I do like the contrast of the nice looking appealing face versus the rest of her uh, you know sometimes the contrast makes it feel a little bit more creepy rather than just having everything look like scary like every single part of a character looks scary so sometimes I like to play with the balancing I also liked how I changed her little uh, like hair twisty into something that reminds me of a Venus flytrap. Some fans have been asking me to do more how to draw ebooks, paperbacks, and workbooks. I released Draw One Girl with 20 Hairstyles and Draw One Boy with 20 Hairstyles. These are the side view versions to the front view books I released in the past. The side view books will show you how to draw all kinds of cute, pretty, fun, and professional looking hairstyles for your own OCs. And this could be easier to start for some of you, especially beginners. If you've got the front view books already, these new side view books can provide more variety and you can learn even more skills to design hairstyles for different viewpoints. It's a great idea to solidify your drawing skills so you can handle character designs from all kinds of angles, which will help make your art look more natural and dynamic. Actually, this is a very important skill to have when designing characters for animation, cartoons, and comics. I made these books as both ebooks and paperbacks because various fans have told me they like different types of books to help them learn better. The ebooks are instant and provide quick access, while the paperbacks are nice to hold in your hands or to give your eyes a break from screen time. I've also made new workbooks that help you even more called Design Your Hair Workbook for a female side and male side views. This is ideal if you don't want to worry about drawing proportionate faces first because these workbooks have ready-made face templates where you just draw and color on right away to design your dream hairstyles. They provide an instant starting place. Similar to my other workbooks, they have 20 of the same face templates from the How to Draw books, so you can practice drawing those same 20 hairstyles, and then plus 10 bonus face templates for you to experiment and design your own hair. Use the How to Draw ebooks or paperbacks as your guide and the workbooks for hands-on practice. You can draw and color right on the templates using your various art supplies. Your imagination is the limit. These are all available on my Mayu bookstore on Amazon. The link is in the video description. Happy drawing! I thought it would be fun to give her monster legs something that reminds me of her tights. So I gave them the like the striped designs and then I colored them like the tights. I just think it's a perfect blend of the cute versus the monster. Yeah, as I was coloring in her melted licorice hair, uh, I had to be aware of making the surface look shiny and especially those bubbles. Like imagine being sucked into this like really sticky bubbly uh, mass of melted licorice and you can't even escape and the more you struggle the deeper you sink and it's so sticky. I was thinking it would be really fun if I drew the remains of Fix-It Felix that got trapped in her hair. And then I was thinking, you know, like what could have happened? Like what's the backstory? Why did Vanellope do that? I don't know, did they have a disagreement on something? What's your fan theory? Let me know in the comments. I just love how the hat kind of still stays there and then the his hammer's poking out. Oh, I guess he couldn't fix this situation this time. What? Okay, for the second sweet girl, I'm gonna do something a little bit different where I'm gonna make her less human and more, slightly more monstrous in the features. I think this is gonna be really fun. 
I can't wait to see how Lilo's gonna turn out. I knew right away that one of the things I wanted to really exaggerate in my monster cutie design was her mouth. And I wanted to make the mouth look bigger and to like give it an unsettling feeling. So I decided to draw it like this that kind of wraps the whole way around her face, which is kind of creepy. Uh, and then, then I decided to give her like this gap in the middle and then I'm going to fill it with these sharp teeth. I also wanted to up the creep factor by giving her four eyes, uh, which is really like it is starting to turn into this like nightmare feel for me because it just looks super weird. And like, especially with these shiny highlights in them, it makes the eyes look very sh like just alert and bright, maybe a little slimy on the surface. And it also reminded me of aliens. And then I thought that's a great direction because. You know, Stitch is kind of like an experiment. So I was thinking, what if Lila was some kind of alien monster that got sent to us here on Earth because of, mm, I'm not sure, where the fan theory might go to. If you want, you can comment your own ideas in the in the comments below. But I was thinking if I turned Lilo into some kind of alien monster cutie, that would be really cool. I also like her hula dance outfit with the leaves and the um, and the skirt. So I was thinking about turning the leaves, like the the areas where the leaves are. What if they were tentacles instead, that were grasping in the air or were you know wiggling or maybe they they have like smell receptors on them. I don't know. And then for the dress part, instead of making it like an actual thing she wears what if they were just these long giant tentacles and that's how she moves on the ground or she can grab things she can grab you for example that'd be really creepy and scary but i thought um you know by changing certain aspects of the original and kind of twisting them into this new um, slightly horrifying way i think that was really good Originally in my initial concept sketch, I had her hair kind of still neat and tidy, uh, but with all her, you know, wiggling tentacles around her. And then I thought, well, the hair doesn't really match the energy or just the overall design of what I wanted. So then I instead I decided to mess her hair up a little bit by giving them these stray strands and these long, thin, like wisps of hair, kind of just messy here and there. So I thought that matched the feeling of my monster cutie design. When I was coloring her lower tentacles, I wanted to make the like I wanted to make them look like they were just blending into her upper body, like they kind of just grew out of her skin or something. So I didn't want to make the tentacles look too segmented or separated. I wanted to have a nice fused look. So that's why I was blending the greens into her skin color. And I thought that blended feeling makes it look a little bit more real. I like the fact that, you know, it could be like from far away, she could still kind of look like a cute little young hula dancer. And then you'll be like, oh, how cute. And then as you come closer, as she comes closer, you're like, oh, wait, that's not a dancer at all. And then she eats you. Or wait, maybe she doesn't. Hmm. I don't know. What would she do with her victims? Let me know your fan theories and backstories in the comments. I love to see what you come up with because I know you're all so creative. In case you like coloring in cute, creepy, and kawaii goth characters, I encourage you to explore your creativity in my Gothic Cuties coloring book on my Mayu bookstore on Amazon. It's filled with my original pastel goth inspired girls, cute creepy designs, and kawaii horror illustrations. Link is in the video description. And also thanks to all of you for posting your coloring creations on Instagram with the hashtag MayuArt and in your Amazon reviews. I'll be sharing some more fan creations soon. I love getting the bright red in there because to me, like red is a very like alert and um, striking color. And in nature, red usually means poison or warning or danger. So I was thinking red could be a warning sign that she could be poisonous. The red in this design plays a nice double role because of that warning and also because it reminds me of the red that Lilo originally wears. 
The thing is, I still think the Lilo monster cutie still retains some of her cuteness, but she's just really scary at the same time. What do you think? Let me know in the comments if you think she looks more creepy to you or more cute to you. What do you think of today's video? Let me know your thoughts in the comments and if you want to see another video like this, hit that like button and subscribe in case you haven't already so you won't miss my future videos and also be sure to turn on the bell notification so you get notified. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next fun Friday! There are over 50 books now on my Mayu bookstore on Amazon, all in one convenient place. The link is in the video description. See you next week, I've got another fun Friday video. Till next time.